here. And so we're gonna go through each of these tools. Um, the information I'm gonna give you is available here on the documentation. You'll see that file management gives you all these descriptions. Of course, we're not gonna go as in depth as it is here, but it is available to you should you uh, need that information. Um, and it goes through um, every option here. And so uh, you have that um, available to you. For now, uh, we're gonna go here. Um, when we click on new SEML document, we're gonna go ahead and do that. The document that comes up will look just like a standard new Word document. Um, so the new document, the new SEML document will come up and you'll see that it just creates a new Word document. The one thing that is different is that the template will already be applied. I don't believe um, um, you will be using this too often, um, as often you'll be working with manuscripts um, where you will be composing and applying structure to, um, to that document. But if you need to create a new SEML document for any uh, purpose, um, for any reason, um, you can feel free to click on new SEML document and what that will do is we'll create a new document with the template applied. We're gonna go ahead and close out of that one. Applying the SEML template, um, we'll apply the template to the document that you're currently. So as I was saying, um, when you click on apply SEML template, um, what you have, um, you have the ability to just apply the Word template um, directly without having to go through um, a sort of more manual view. Um, manual way. And so what the template is, is that it's essentially our um, our styles, right, prepared, ready for Word so that you can apply them um, easily uh, throughout. So if I go ahead and click on apply SML template now, you'll see that it gives you a warning that it doesn't allow you to do that on unsafe files. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this file as just a test document do that and then now I'll go through and apply um, the SCML template it will ask me at this point um, to if I want to associate styles across the document and what this is uh, helpful for I'm just going to go ahead and hit yes uh, so that you can see um, the dialog here we go it takes a little bit to do to do that, as you can see, as my screen now starts doing a nice little pinwheel um, in Word. So it gives us this dialog box, and this dialog box, what it allows us to do is it takes every style that is present in a document, in this case, normal is the only one present here, and allows us to associate it with a related SCML uh, style, as you can see here, pulled from the template. And what then that will go through and do it, it will actually change the style uh, throughout the document so you don't have to do that manually. This is helpful if you have a document that is already pretty well um, defined using, let's say, Word's uh, standard style like H1 for heading or, or head one for um, you know, A heads, head two for B head, and so on and so forth. Um, and so at this point, we don't have any of those styles, everything is normal, so we can't actually associate anything, but if you were to do so, you would just go here, pick the style that you want to associate, and then say associate, and it will actually show you the, the association here on um, the dialog box. And so, we're gonna go ahead and cancel that because we don't actually have styles to, um, to associate. Um, so at this point, um, once you apply the style, once you apply the SCML template, um, you'll see that the document won't look any different. Um, and so at this point, um, we have our, our document with uh, the template applied. Batch print allows us to actually go through and print um, either notes, specifically revision marks, author queries, internal que queries, or typesetter notes as we go, as if you need to actually print um, the, yes, we are getting oriented here. Um, as you go through, um, and if you need to print this document, um, whatever, for whatever reason, maybe you need something, need somebody to view, you're able to use batch print to print actually all the, um, the tags or anything that you need to, 
um, for review. Um, this is often not used as you know, our workflow is pretty much uh, paperless, but um, the option is there um, if you need it. Um, split, do uh, split document allows you to split the document at different section breaks. So for example, if you need to send a multi-author work and you have um, a 100% one, a like everything is in one document, document um, you can actually split this document throughout um, so that way you have each individual chapter as a separate file and you're able to then send that out uh, to individual authors if necessary uh, style galleries is one of the ways that you can apply styles through the through the document we're going to go ahead and click here and you'll see that there's a number of preset um, preset style galleries for you and what these will do i'll actually show you here um, we'll bring up the common character styles and you'll see um, don't worry too much about the names of the current uh, character styles that you see up here we'll be discussing that um, when we're discussing composition and discussing the SCML list uh, for now uh, B is bold BI is bold italic I is italic and so on and so forth these are also on the site if you need them um, but as, as I said, for now, since this is an overview, you don't need to worry too much about them. Um, so in this instance, uh, what this allows us to do is it allows us applied, to apply uh, common character styles with the press of a button rather than having to go through draft view, which the style galleries, as I said before, allow us to apply styles with the press of a button. It's one of the ways that you can apply um, styles um, throughout uh, the document. So I'll give you um, a, little demo so let's say i wanted to make test bold um, in this case there are many different ways we can do that we're not going to go over them right now because that will be safe for composition but suffice it to say if i wanted to just make this bold i can go ahead and click on the b here the zero that you see here um, and this will give you bold here you can actually see the color coding that um, tim was noting earlier uh, we use this bright pink to note when something is bold and you can see that it's actually rendered as bold as well um, but what you also note, if you go here and we highlight this document you'll see that the formatting in word shows it as bold but were we to export this we will actually have bold tags around um, this uh, word test here uh, so the style galleries serve as a way uh, for you to actually be able to go through um, and simply apply styles, uh, usually in a more intuitive way uh, than the other methods which we'll discuss uh, during the composition lesson. And you can also create your own uh, style galleries with whatever styles you use most. Um, as I said, there are some preset ones here and you can have multiple uh, style galleries open um, at the same time. I'll show you here right um, or you can actually create your own um, should you need to report styles goes through the entire document or through selected documents as we see here um, and actually gives you a list of all the styles um, that you need that are in the document um, or you can say like just give me the built-in styles just give me the user defined styles or just give me styles that are not SCML styles and this is a good way for you to check your files um, before moving on to another stage from uh, composition to make sure that everything is composed in SCML. Insert structure indicators. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what structure indicators are during composition but this is just a simple way that you're able to do that here um, by the press of a button uh, rather than actually having to type this out and style this properly the SAI allows you to do this automatically. Style Painter allows you to take the style already applied. Actually, you can see here that once I deleted the insert structure indicators, you see this gray um, text. This is actually um, styled right now as um, structure, and we don't want that. So I'm just going to show you quickly something here, um, which we'll discuss more in the actual composition lesson uh, but draft view which is one of the options um, that word has natively allows us to see the paragraph styles for each paragraph here we see that this is structure i'm just going to go ahead and change that back to normal so that way we can get back to that point uh, 
this point. Let me just go back quickly to print layout and SAI. So Style Painter allows you to take the style that is already applied to a bit of text. So we're going to go ahead and use our style galleries here. That back up and make this bold. And let's say I want to take this next, take this text as well and make it bold rather than apply it via the style galleries. We're able to take the style painter here and copy the style over. And you can see how it um, automatically applied the B style um, to the word bold here. Uh, this is similar to um, Word's Format Painter. Uh, it's actually the same concept, except that this has um, the ability to take the actual structure rather than just the rendering um, with it. Um, fine text formatting um, allows you here to find local rendering throughout. Um, of course, since this is a document, um, we'll place this here right at the beginning. Um, since this is just a simple document, we won't see any instances of that, but we'll talk more about that uh, tool uh, during composition. And so now we come to what's really uh, the meat and potatoes of the SAI, which is the cleanup uh, option. And this allows us to um, get rid of certain things um, in a Word file while we are, while we are uh, composing our file. So once you click cleanup, you'll see this dialog box with various options. Uh, we'll only go over a couple here just for um, the sake of time, um, but um, several of these are um, essential to composing and composing a document um, quickly. For example, rendering will go through a document and it will look at the formatting that Word has. So for example, if you have a document that has bold italic, bold italic underlines and things like that, um, if you go ahead and click rendering, and click OK, what that will do, it will actually take the, the document, um, look through the formatting, and apply the structure for you. It doesn't do this for paragraph styles. Um, it does this for character styles. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick demo of what that looks like. So let's remove the bolding there. And let's say I get a document, and I have bold here. Actually, it's trying to apply the formatting as it is. So I won't be able to show that completely, but I do have a demo document for you ready. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. I'm going to close out of this. As you can see here, we have italic here used um, in this series page. We can go through and see this document and you'll see that this has italic here at the beginning, uh, here in the words duty, and so on and so forth. So as Tim said, it would be, and actually we see some bold rendering here. Um, it, it would be tedious to go through this and go through one by one, even using the style galleries, clicking and making things italic and bold as they need to. Not only that, but that would introduce human error because that would, um, you would necessarily miss one, right? Especially if you're looking at a document that, for example, this one is 300 pages long, you will miss an italic somewhere. If we go here, go to the SAI, go to cleanup. I'm actually gonna scroll in the document just so that you can see it work. We'll look at it here in this series title. You'll go to cleanup, apply rendering, right? And that's the only one that we're gonna check. I'll go over the other ones. Uh, shortly. Again, not all of them as they are many, but we'll do that during the composition um, during the composition lesson. Um, but when you go ahead and apply rendering, actually